All right, guys, we're gonna talk about the Fujifilm X106 again. I already made my first impressions video on how I felt about this. So by the end of this video, you're gonna find out, did I end up falling in love with this? Is this still the go-to camera or something else? brought a bunch of my other favorite cameras, the Lumix S9, Nikon ZF, and the Leica M11. I was originally only gonna do a comparison on these two, but I knew a bunch of you guys are gonna be crybabies, They're like, oh, the price point, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna go over all of these. Let's get into it. When it comes to the X100V or the 6, whichever one, one of my favorite things to shoot with this camera are things such as this. When I go on road trips, when I'm traveling, say if I'm doing video work, I usually will still have this on me. Just for like quick little, you know, intimate real life moments. Even on photo shoots, models tend to react a little bit differently. The place where it really lives is when I'm shooting things like this. Adventure, road trip, still life. I don't know what you would even call this, but obviously the film simulations make it insanely fun to use. The one thing for me though, is I rarely actually end up posting JPEGs. I'm usually still editing my files here, but there's always like these moments where I don't know. It's like, if this is the only camera I had, I'd be totally happy with it. But when it comes to actually using it for like pro fashion shoots or moments where I might want to print, just anything outside of just the aesthetic of uh, that this camera gives you while shooting with it and also like the final images, all of a sudden you start realizing it's like, uh, it's kind of overhyped. So now let's start getting into some of the other cameras here. Let's start with the Lumix S9. This has kind of like fulfilled the part of the X106. So when it comes to the X106, this thing, I wish I could blend the two cameras together with the whole form factor and the build quality and the viewfinder and the internal flash from the X106. I wish I could put it on the S9. I do think Lumix messed up a little bit by not including that on this camera. But when it comes to image quality, we're getting full frame quality. Yeah, we don't have 40 megapixels, but once you guys compare the files, start comparing the files outside of still life work like this, but for fashion work and portraiture work and just anything else outside of that, full frame is just gonna give you way more bang for your buck. I I know people like to compare crop versus full frame, say it's the same, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you don't know how to fully utilize your tool. But once you do, you can really get more out of a full frame image. Look, did you guys see what I just did? I just put my fucking eye up to this thing there's a viewfinder because this it, this camera needs a freaking viewfinder. What's really fun about the S9 is they have all these customizable options in here. So instead of shooting four by three, which I am on the X106, because it gives me that medium format feel, which when I'm shooting things like this, like I absolutely love that crop ratio. But even more than the four by three crop ratio, I like the 65 by 24, which is similar to the Fujifilm TX1, the X-Pan film camera. You get that format in here. For some reason, they give us that in the X106, even though they have in the X-T5. I don't know why Fuji does something like that, but. So when it comes to these two cameras, again, I wish we could just blend these two. I think this would be the most perfect camera. But once this was introduced and we have the full LUT support, so you can put up to like 50 or 60 of your own LUTs, all your own film simulations, whatever you want, easily control them straight from the camera, uh, you know, imports from the app, yada, yada, yada. That kind of killed a lot of the thunder from Fujifilm because it's like, now I don't have to just rely on Fujifilm's film simulations. Because again, if I was able to customize them, I wouldn't feel the need to go and edit them all the time. So I don't know, let's go to the next spot guys one thing i love about my hometown here there's so much to photograph here and i always take it for granted because i grew up here obviously so it's all the same but i moved to la or no i moved to pasadena then to la then austin then back to la and now i'm back you know in my home county it's kind of nice because i have all these new visions like this how beautiful is that? <laughs> just, a, just a few years ago, I would have saw that. And well, I wouldn't have saw that, I would have ignored it. But uh, here we are. One unique thing about the X106, which is a good thing, but also a bad thing sometimes. In real life, the frame I have right now looks amazing. But once I bring out the X106, I feel like I lose a lot of, like all of a sudden the image starts looking smaller. And that's part of the crop sensor, because you start losing some of your field of view and everything looks a little bit more compressed. But, are oh, you good? <laughs> So it's, it's weird because it has its own look. It looks amazing, but at the same time, compared to some of my other cameras, like this Leica M11, it's less about it being a Leica and yada, 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 
but it's more it's full frame. Same reason people like medium format, like there's Fuji people out there that say, oh, full frame versus crop sensor, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. And I agree in some forms it doesn't matter, but those same people will also say, oh, medium format's superior to full frame. It's like, well, that argument doesn't hold up because you just said full frame to crop doesn't matter. So you definitely get different looks and you get different image quality and you get a whole different feel from each sensor size. So the Fuji doesn't want to focus on this truck here. I wish that dude didn't kneel down because I was going to try to get him in the frame. So just how the Lumix S9 kind of stole the X106 Thunder when it comes to film simulations, the M11 has kind of stole the Thunder in every way on the X106. We'll get into the Nikon ZF as well and what that's kind of killed the Thunder for me for the X106. But when it comes to the M11, anybody who loves using the X106 because of the way you're forced to use it kind of almost makes you use it like a film camera a little bit. But, you know, with film simulations through the viewfinder, which I think is still something special. The M11 is truly a film experience, but with the digital sensor. It makes me feel like I'm getting that film filling when you're shooting it. But again, we're getting a full frame 60 megapixel sensor out of it, where the megapixels, um, I could live with 40. I'm just fine with that. But the 60 definitely doesn't hurt. So when you shoot with this camera, you have no digital viewfinder. You are stuck with the optical viewfinder. Your light meter is like straight out of a film camera. You have two red arrows and a middle red dot. That's how you set your exposure. Your ISO up here is a, it's where uh, the film rewinder usually would be on this camera. You get focus here. I have no idea how that's going to look, but again, it's digital, so I can actually go in here and check it out. I have the uh, Taipok Eureka 50 millimeter on here. To make this more fair, though, I'm going to put. I got to keep this clean, and you'll see why at the end. <laughs> I'm going to put the Leica 35 Summicron F2 version 4, the King of Boca lens on the M11 to make it more fair. And I know it's, it's an expensive camera. I know, I know, I know. That's not the point here, though. There's, you know, anybody else can make a camera just like this for way less. Leica is the only one doing it. I don't know why. The closest thing we have to this is the Lumix S9, except for the viewfinder, and it crushes me. It doesn't have that. And the Nikon ZF, which we'll get into, but let's talk about this one some more. It's, it's so weird how the experience of this is just, oh, I don't know what it is. This truck is fucking gorgeous, though. For me, I think the biggest point that's going to surface with this setup are lenses. When I'm shooting still life, the X106 lens looks just fine. Most of the time you're gonna be shooting at 2.8, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to portraiture work or the fashion work or all the other stuff that I do, I feel the X106 kind of lacks some, it doesn't lack character, but I feel like it lacks that feeling that I get when I look at an image from one of my film cameras. And I think part of it's the sensor and it's also the lens design on there. You guys know I love, I love, love, love lens character, but the character on the X106, I feel is more actual deep Effects rather than charm. Let's talk about this Leica lens real quick. This Leica lens is deemed by Leica or the, the guy who designed it from Leica as the King of Boca. Everybody's kind of confused because it's like, it's not a super fast lens. Like, why is there, why is this being called the King of Boca? You want your portrait taken? You want your portrait taken? Yeah? I know when he passed by, I was like, oh, why he ducked down? He's gonna get his photo. Oh, this is gonna be cool, bro. Sorry, it's film. Takes a moment. What's your name? Sydney. Sydney, I'm Cam. Good to meet you, brother. Yeah, you too, man. So, guys, that's one cool thing is uh, it was taking me a moment to focus because this isn't an autofocus camera or anything like that. But, you know, I just told him, I was like, sorry, it's film. It looks like a freaking film camera. So it gave me an excuse to take my time. But we could go back and do playback real quick. And this, this is fucking, <laughs> this is fucking cool. <laughs> That's sick. So, see so guys, I could have taken the X106 and I would have loved it because I still captured it. You know, whatever tool is in your hand, that's the best tool. But the fact that I just got to capture on my favorite lens and you guys are gonna see the character on this lens, that's like, Oh, like it, this, this setup screams to me. And I don't know, when I did a, the first fast shoot, the X106, I was kind of let down because the bokeh on that lens, it's very busy. And usually I don't mind that. You'll see the bokeh on this lens is very busy as well, but it's like a poetic busy. Or in the X106, it's kind of like this distracting busy. Obviously, this is all opinion. You know, people might might like the, X, the look of the X106 more. I personally don't. And again, this all kind of circles back to, you know, Fuji kind of letting us down on the X106. Like, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to them really to step that camera up. They kind of just stuffed in the, the higher megapixel sensor and put IBIS in it. It's like, that's not why we like this camera.
mid shot, but I like it. So one of the things that we all love about the X-106, obviously are the film sims, but over time, I started to realize seeing the film sims through the viewfinder is beyond inspiring because it's like seeing the, like a film edit already live and it and, and evokes you to like hustle the photo more, if that makes sense. I still take the raw files and I go and edit them to do my own edits. And so it's kind of like, you know, why the JPEGs are amazing and everything. I rarely ever post those. I'm usually still going in to do my own edits because I have my own look, my own style. And so I do wish that Leica had film simulations as well, but you know, I'm just gonna go and edit them anyways. And so once I came to terms with that and accepted it, it's a little bit freeing. So it's weird, this camera just, I mean, you guys know me. There's, there's always new cameras coming out and it starts inspiring me and blah, blah, blah. But this is like one of the few cameras where just how the X100 series really captivated me earlier on. This is doing something similar. So the kind of like wake up call I had with the X106, circling back to what I was talking about, when I did my first fashion shoot with it alongside the Nikon ZF, that's where I was like, oh, the ZF just like, it crushes it. With the raw files, you're able to push the raw files way more. It's way closer to getting a film look. How do I? so hard to explain but when you're editing any of the cropped fuji sensors yes you get a film look there's people out there getting insane film looks out of it but you never realize how much you can't stretch it until you get a full frame sensor next to it so i was using the x106 alongside the zf a lot and the zf files just constantly looked closer to film constantly just had a little bit better image quality just constantly looked better that's kind of when i started to leave the x106 at home on photo shoots because it was just night and day so the leica m11 is kind of like that ZF file where I can get all that full frame image quality plus even more, even more dynamic range and megapixels and yada, yada, yada. But with the Fujifilm X106 form factor and inspiration when it comes to shooting. Now, let's talk about the actual Nikon ZF. So again, while the Lumix S9 kind of stole the thunder with film simulations for the X106 for me, the Leica M11 kind of stole the thunder when it comes to lens options and image quality and yada, yada, yada. But with the ZF, this was kind of the catalyst of me kind of having a wake up call of like, the X106 is amazing and I love it, but it ain't all of that. It's kind of getting overhyped a little bit. So I love Fujifilm, there's no hate against Fujifilm. This is, we're just having some real talk here. So Jericho got on the Nikon ZF and he brought his Nikon ZF. So we're gonna switch sides real quick and I'm gonna film him photographing with it and let's see what he has to say about it. Okay guys, uh, so I wanna get a couple shots of this truck too, cause it's honestly cinematically just placed, especially with the weeds and stuff in front of it. But I've been using the Nikon ZF for a minute and I have the X100V and I haven't really been using it. I kept it cause it is smaller and lighter. And I thought, you know, like any type of vacation stuff, I will bring the X100V, but I really have. And it's cause the look I can get from this full frame and the amount of like low light I can pull out of it. It's like less restriction. Also, I love this 40 millimeter retro lens. It's very cheap for a prime, like nice F2 lens. It fits the aesthetic and it it's not heavy. So that's nice. Also guys, just the dials, being able to dial everything and they're brass. Guys, I got a coffee stain on my shirt. If I see anybody in the comments talking about it, I'm gonna uh, ban them or I'll make Cam ban them. You'll, let me see if I can get another angle. How's it going? Mind if I get a portrait? I'd love to. I love I love this setup. How's it going today? Thank you. Uh, fantastic. We're just taking pictures. Oh, that's awesome. You know, Ukaipa is just known for its extremely nice people. <laughs> yeah, not really, but I think I may have taken all the photos I like of this truck. So again, guys, the, the 40 millimeter lens is something slightly special. Like, I don't know, when you first start using it, you notice like a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a separation that's really nice. And I think it's cause it's like not perfect. They kind of fit this like F2 into a smaller, lighter package. And I don't know, it's got some vignetting. It's got a little bit of character. Something that people really love about the Fuji and its lens is that it's like very sharp and it has its own qualities that I do really like, but like compared next to each other, I'm feeling this one, so. I don't know. So guys, there's, again, the ZF is kind of was like woke me up from the whole X100 six hype because for some reason, again, when you put those files next to each other, it is night and day. It's very, very, very strange. Again, the X100 six looks great. And I think, you know, if you love it, you love it. That's cool. I love it as well. But the ZF just, there's something with this combo here. There's magic to it to where I now take it on every freaking fashion shoot. Like it's my main fashion camera now. Okay, so the other thing, so Cam got switched off of the X100 
six to this. The camera I switched off to this, because I kept my X100V, is actually the Fujifilm GFX 50S. And I had that one because I like the separation that it gives. This feels like so close to the same thing. And it has, it's just so much easier to use. It's got all the dials that I like that I couldn't keep my GFX. And I just, I had to switch to this because I just was only picking this up. So that's what I switched out of. So to that point, I want to say this earlier, but I didn't want to really say it because I didn't know if people would be in the comments like, oh, that's like you're full of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The Nikon ZF, there's some, the, the Nikon ZF was the first Nikon I ever shot with and I wasn't familiar with their files, but the ZF files are closer to the GFX files than the X106 is closer to the full frame files to any camera. Like it's yeah. weird how good they are. It reminds me of like a mix of like Sony's dynamic range and image quality with like Canon's color science and the way they edit. That's what the ZF sensor reminds me of. The Z8 too, but there's something about the ZF. I don't know what it is. Shout out to anybody that's made it halfway through the video here. Make sure to subscribe. I know this is just a gear video, but I made some really great videos. Jericho and I just went to Area 51 and put out this great little weird YouTube film and no one watched it. So anybody that complains, hey, I'm tired of gear videos, go fucking watch that video because that one's for y'all and y'all didn't show up it's doing horrible so go watch it also uh down in the description i finally put my new uh lightroom film uh presets out there so go get those too maybe so i can pay jericho better guys those look like film and they're so nice and you know i, I don't use lightroom because i don't get paid enough to pay the monthly subscription but if i did I would only use cam schmacky LUTs. So. Hey, enough of that. Look at this truck right there. We missed that. Guys, when it comes to stuff like this, I absolutely love the X106. But as you guys have been hearing throughout this video, the rest of the cameras like just are more versatile. I don't know. I have there's so much I want to say about this. So while maybe it comes down to the vibe and the energy behind the camera, there's other cameras that even do that better now. So while I'm shooting with the X106 right now, I am really enjoying the experience. Um, like this is, again, this camera just really makes everything super fun. But again, it's no longer my first choice when it comes to it. You guys might be assuming what's coming at the end of this video now, but. So all these cameras can pull off what we're doing here. We're just shooting walls and buildings and cars and stuff. But the biggest elephant in the room for me when it comes to the depreciation value of this camera is portraits. Jericho and I are gonna take some portraits of each other with a few of these cameras. We'll go over a little bit on the raw files so you guys can like see the difference there. No, I'm not saying you can't shoot portraits on this. Like calm down, that's not what I'm saying. You can shoot portraits on anything. I'm just saying when you guys see the different looks of these cameras, you might realize like, oh, you know, what's the hype behind this camera? All right guys, these aren't gonna be uh, any uh, award-winning portraits here or light shit. Ah, uh, I never put a fucking card in this. <laughs> Obviously, these are totally different lenses. But again, this is the point. With the X-106, you know, I don't like using it for portraits anymore. I don't like using it for fashion work anymore. Like, I love using the camera for stuff like that, but I don't like the results anymore. Like there's actually possibly better options out there now. I know some people are like, why is an Nikon ZF in this? This this isn't the same form factor. To me, it's more about the overall soul behind the camera. We got the brass buttons up here. Yeah, it's a little bit larger. Yeah, it's way more dense, but the same way that an actual film camera makes me feel, this evokes the same thing. And that's what all these cameras are kind of doing here is they're giving us that feeling of like shooting film, but you know, in a digital format. Basically, crop versus full frame sensors here. That's the elephant in the room here. Again, 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 again. I know you can get it, like the sensor size doesn't matter, yada, yada, yada. But once you start, you like, you becoming a master of your own look and your own whatever, full frame does open up the doors a little bit more to push it a little bit more from post-production to creativity when it comes to portraiture and getting more separation, lens options, like all of it. The cool thing about this, even if I had the X-T5 still, which I actually sold, this is leading to the master point here you can adapt um, lenses onto that but the downside of that is the crop sensor crops into the actual lens so say if i was to put this vintage leica version 4 simicron 35 millimeter king of boca lens on an xt5 it's going to crop out a lot of the edges and that's where a lot of the charm of this lens is coming into play is when you put on a full frame sensor you're getting more of the edge distortion and the character and all that the beauty to it the whole point of this video is i'm signing the x 406 again i'm a little bit let down that fujifilm didn't give us 
plus maybe a faster lens that maybe once you open it up, you get even more character out of it. Um, you know, maybe a larger battery with better recycle times on the flash. Maybe, I don't know. There's a lot of different things that come down. Maybe a better viewfinder. Yeah, I don't know. This camera just, I feel like the hype has kind of died out for me. I still have semi-romantic feelings for it because there is a lot of charm to it still. But when it comes to capturing photographs that I truly care about, the X106 isn't the camera that I go to anymore. It's one of these. So, I don't know. You guys have at it in the comment section. We need a dumpster. I'm gonna get rid of this trash. Also guys, we're done filming the video, but we're gonna get uh, more shots around town. I wanna get more photographs, but we probably need more B-roll. And to do that, I have all these cameras to choose from. When it comes to, again, this type of still life and shooting around towns and fun, just like, you know, road trip type stuff, I'm choosing the M11. Not because it's the most expensive, not because it's a Leica, but because it's truly just fun for this type of stuff. Having the optical viewfinder on there, I could care less about 60 megapixels right now, but say if I did want to do print, which this morning my ADHD, irresponsible, I'm not rich, I'm just irresponsible brain, was like, I should buy a printer. Maybe that'll be another video talking about printing our own work. Obviously with the Nikon ZF, when it comes to this, I love using this for fashion work. We're gonna go through all these real quick. The Nikon ZF for fashion work is insane. With the 40 millimeter, there's something about it that's just magical and I get so excited to show shoot models, portraits, or just fashion or story time, whatever it is. I love this setup. But when it comes to still life and road trip type stuff, plus portrait work, plus fashion stuff, plus documentary type work, the M11 still right now, like these two are kind of my, my all-stars right now. When it comes to the Lumix S9, I love having all the film presets and stuff. But to be frank, I don't have any adapters right now for this to use vintage lenses. I have all the Lumix primes for them and they're amazing. But this camera comes in clutch for hybrid work for me right now. So if I want to shoot any video reels or uh, any YouTube videos or anything like that, but I also want a camera to shoot photographs, that's where this thing comes in. This thing's freaking amazing for video, like open gaze, 6K, full frame. No other camera really does that besides the S52X. This thing, I'm obsessed with this for that. And again, when it comes to X106, this is purely about the vibes and the experience. But again, these other cameras kind of do that a little bit better. I don't know, there's a romance behind this camera, but when it comes to me wanting to actually take meaningful shots, this is the last camera I choose out of these. Uh, the whole point of this video is I'm selling this camera. <laughs> It's, it's just been collecting dust and I've been contemplating selling it. I didn't want to sell it just because again, those romantic feelings, but I just, I just need to get rid of it. I'm not using it and I have all these other cameras that I picked before it. So you guys have at it. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings like, oh, put it down in the comments. I won't hide any of your guys' comments <laughs> unless y'all get crazy. Then, uh, then yeah. All right. Did I miss anything else that we rolled on last time? Okay. So, ooh, I forgot one last thing here. Also guys, one last thing I need to touch on. Obviously you can adapt any lens to any camera, but the Nikon ZF mount is super special because you can adapt E-mount lenses to the Nikon ZF and get full autofocus. It acts like, you know, like it is native glass on there. It is bizarre. Like this shouldn't be a thing. So I actually have been using this for some of my more professional fashion shoots as well, because I could put on my uh, Sony 24 to 70 G master lens on the Nikon ZF and get pure hundred percent quality autofocus out of this. Not only that, I have these Voigtlander E-mounts and there's the electronic contacts in the back, they're mounted focus lenses, but they communicate with the ZF when I have it through the Z to E-mount adapter and uh, it will do face detection. And when I lay a manual focus, face detection turns green. There's no other like kind of thing that does that. So this is why it's so unique. And again, we're getting full frame sensors and we're getting all the image quality edge to edge on the, on the glass. We're getting all the character. Yeah, I go on forever about this, but. I love you, X106. I love you. You're an amazing camera. <clears throat> but you're just not in anymore. You know, Fuji let you down. They just, you know, Fuji, give us a fucking media format version of this or something. Come on.